Uh, today I'm going to talk about, uh, this is my title, and just make, <coughs> I just make it clear, it's not uh, applied math work, it's a uh, pure math work, though I use this title. And it's, it's not application of the existence result on random matrix theory on this principal component exists. We, we will have some new results, and uh, you will see it has some applications uh, in this PCA. Uh, There, there are many, many names. Actually, that's, uh, Timo mentioned another name. I think, unfortunately, I think this is not, the, not very interesting. This PCA is not very interesting to this audience. Uh, actually, the result itself, maybe it's more, imp more important, uh, more, more interesting to this audience. That's, that's my, my, fe my feeling, okay. So uh, for, uh, for the audience who have no idea or are not clear about this principal component analysis, uh, let me briefly talk about what, what this result is about. Uh, we talk about this question. Just say, uh, Wigner matrix, this is very popular. Just say you have, uh, here in, in, this, in this talk, I will let all the numbers to be real numbers. Uh, so. We have a Wigner symmetric matrix, which is symmetric ma random symmetric ma matrix, uh, put a scale here. And as you know, the upright entries hij are independent random variables with mean zero and variance one. This is the standard set, uh, setting. Uh, in the past five years, I was keeping asked the, the same question. How about the mean is non-zero? Right? If the mean is non-zero, what, what can we say? Uh, actually, if the mean are all same, then it's an easy question because then it means you H plus a uh, matrix which is rank one. This is actually easy. But how about the means are different? So it means you add, eh, too fast. It means you add uh, A which is full rank deterministic symmetric matrix. And, and uh, just, just, just not, don't let A be a very weird function. Let's say the eigenvalues of A is comparable with the H and our question is, what can we say about this A? And the one thing very important is, in this talk, we will not assume that A is diagonal. Uh, uh, later, I will mention A is diagonal is uh, 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 relatively simple. Uh, relative simple. It's the, of course, it's still very complicated. Uh, you, you will see it. Uh, uh, one thing you can say it's relative simple. I really can say it's relative simple compared with this one is uh, one of my our <laughs> previous work, which is if rank A is it's just finite, it's just order one. It, it, for this one, why do I say it's relatively simple than this question? Because now you can consider this one as a perturbation, because you only have few ranks, uh, small ranks. Or it, as I said, if the rank is one, it's, it's relatively simple. So for this one, actually, we get many, many things, like the, what's the di distribution, the largest eigenvalues of the distributions, the, uh, the eigenvectors. Something. But uh, today we are going to talk about the full rank case. First, let me give you a very rough picture about what will happen about this H plus A. Let's say if we, you, you, uh, first let me tell you this. The eigenvector of A is not very important. A is still a symmetric matrix. The eigenvalue of A are important. If we look at this case, A is, uh, the, the largest eigenvalue of A is 10. And others, half of the others are one, and half of the others are two. Then you will see the spectrum of this H plus A. Again, H is the Wigner matrix. It will look like this. Look like this. In instead of semicircular law, uh, it will be something move to here. Uh, later, you will see this law. And you will see that one eigenvalue jumped out because the reason is one of the eigenvalue of A is much larger than the others. So you will see one of them jumped out, and uh, this one is we call it outlier. Outlier. Okay, that's the that's the basic picture. So uh, next page. Uh, uh, okay, so we can ask some basic question. Uh, first question, is, for a long time, we really have no idea how to deal with this one. And uh, though uh, we have been asked many, many times, uh, if the mean is zero, what can we say? Uh, the mean is zero, what can we say? But uh, we, for a long time, we can only do the ranks, finite rank case. 
Okay, so some basic question. Which first one is just uh, very natural. Uh, what's this? What's what's this density? Uh, what's what's this curve? And this one can be solved with the uh, free probability. Uh, and <coughs> next level question is how about the local density? Just uh, uh, the density holds in how small scale? Whether it can hold in a very very small scale? Uh, later I, I will mention it's, it's true actually. Uh, you can prove some <coughs> result like this. It's called a rigidity, which is if you have this density, right? You got this density. This is deterministic. This is not random. And use this density, you calculate the classical location of the case eigenvalue. Then you will find out the distance between the, the eigenvalue and the classical location of the, this eigenvalue is very small. As you can see, the gamma k minus gamma k plus minus one. This is a typical distance between the eigenvalues over there, and it's just slightly larger than this one. And it holds with a very large scale. Uh, large scale. Uh, next level question is, how about the, uh, yeah. This is a density space. This is not a density space. Yes. And uh, one with the, with the, if you know the density of A. If no, you know the, you, you, I if. I have no density of A. A, yes, yes. But it's well, uh, but uh, do I need Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this uh, this this one this one actually you you basically you, you you basically solve a, a deterministic equation. You will you will have the this. It's not very uh, it's complicated, it's, but maybe you can leave the work to computer. I think. I mean, it, just to get this one, it's the brief spin. Just you need to solve a solve a deterministic uh, equation. Right. Yeah, you, uh, actually, you will have the chance to see exactly this okay. equation. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, next level is, of course, you ask whether the eigenvector is. It's the question so far, and uh, later I will say <laughs> we proved it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> just so far, it's it's just the the questions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, very end, in the very end, you will see. <laughs> we, we, uh, as, as, so, so here, what, uh, here you, can, you can understand it in this way, just say whether this is true. <laughs> and uh, the next level question is about eigenvector, whether the eigenvector are delocalized. Actually, I want to see a strong, very strong delocalization of the eigenvectors. Because I, instead of look at the component of eigenvectors, I look at if let's say UK is the kth eigenvector of H plus A, and W is a deterministic vector. Just I look at in the product of UK and W, which means the direction, just the direction uh, project of the UK on W, whether this one is small. And for any W, for any du fixed W, you will see this one. You will see this result. This is called the uh, it's not called. It's, uh, we would like to call it delocalization of the vector in any direct, any fixed directions, any fixed directions. Yeah, just uh, it's a uh, kind of strong. But uh, but whether this is true or not, it's uh, it's not always true. It depends on the whether A has very large eigenvalues. If A has some very large eigenvalue, this is not true for some eigenvector. But if the eigen here, the I should not use the word large. I should mean whether there is an eigenvalue is far away from the other eigenvalue of A. Yeah, yes. the, uh, or, or I say whether you will see this outlier. Yeah, outlier. OK. Uh, and the other questions, uh, like what's the behavior of this outlier? What's the behavior of the ve eigenvector of this outlier? And uh, what's the joint, uh, joint distribution of the largest K? K uh, non-outlier non eigenvalues, just uh, what, what's the distribution of the eigenvalues at here, and of course the, the final the, uh, ultimate uh, question could be what's the k-point correlation function of H, H plus A in the bulk, in the bulk. Uh, but the, unfortunately, uh, if you want to know the answer, I, cannot, I can tell you we did not prove this one. <laughs> so, so this one you will not see the, 
see, see, see the proof. I mean, uh, because I, I know many people maybe are waiting to see the results like this, but unfortunately, we, we did not. <laughs> yeah. OK, so, so this is the Wigner. And uh, let, let me uh, roughly talk about why it's complicated. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are many, many reasons this H plus A uh, make H plus A to be a very complicated question, uh, hard question. First one is uh, we see the Wigner matrix had two very important properties. The first one is very clear. The entries are independent. Everyone knows this. And the second one, maybe you did not realize and did not notice it before, which is if you look at each row and the column of this Wigner matrix, it's actually isotropic. Just uh, if you look at this, the vector, the case vector of H uh, here, uh, and you need to remove the diagonal part. The diagonal part is not important. And you call this vector HK. And in the product of this HK with any deterministic W, it satisfies this uh, uh, CR, uh, CRT. Right? It's, it means it's, it's isotropic. So why it's important? Because if you think about you, you build some matrix, you start from a small matrix, and it's a Wigner matrix. Each time you add one row and one column at here, and one row and one column here, so make it bigger, 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 you will get a big, large Wigner matrix. Because each time you add a vector which is isotropic, so make it you relatively easy to, to, get, to see the convergency, to see many properties. So you think about if this time I add a vector which has per preferred direction, and that ta another time we have a vector point to another direction, then it will be extremely complicated. Right? So, OK, because of these two reasons, so we, we tried the H plus A before, uh, uh, but it didn't work. Uh, but there are two, uh, two special, ex ex special cases. It's doable and uh, still very hard. One is if A is diagonal. If it's diagonal, then of course, as you can see, they, they at least in H plus A satisfying these two conditions. And another case is H is GOE. If H is GOE, what you can do is you can rotate this H. And you rotate this H. With, at the same time, you rotate this A to be a diagonal matrix. So instead of H plus A, it's H plus a diagonal matrix. Uh, that's why I said the, the, uh, this, this two cases is uh, relatively easy. Uh, OK, so uh, this is about Wigner matrix. And uh, actually, there's a very similar question uh, for the covariance matrix. It's, it turns out to be very important uh, for this principal component analysis. The question is very similar. Let me quickly go through it uh, because you have seen the big picture of the, the, the pic uh, our, our, our topics. So in this case, you have this x, which is not symmetric. And you look at this x, x star. This is symmetric matrix. And the entries of x are independent random variables with mean, and, with mean 0 and the variance 1. And you look at this matrix. This is, uh, you can call it a simple, a simple covariance matrix. And what you can do is you multiply a t. t is just a deterministic uh, matrix. It's not even square. Uh, so of course, it's not symmetric. And if you look at the eigenvalues of t, t star minus i, it's, it's full ranks. Uh, and most of the eigenvalues are comparable with this, the eigenvalues of x, x star here. So our question is, instead of look at this x, x star, what can we say about this x, t, x, x, uh, there's star here, sorry. Uh, t, x, x star, t star. Brief spin just make it twisted. After you twist it, what can you say? Yeah, of course, you, again, you cannot turn it back because you, turn, you rotate it, it's, it's not Wigner anymore. So what can we say? Uh, furthermore, uh, this one seems more important, and uh, maybe it's uh, as important as this one. Just if you put something more complicated in the middle, you put a, a vector in the middle, which is uh, this, this is just i, and this is e, e. e is a vector, which is just, uh, what, how do you call it, uniform vector, a uniform vector. So you put something like this at, in the middle, what can you say? For example, if I tell you the t, what can you say about this this matrix? Uh, this is the this is the question. And the, what? 
Uh, yeah, next page. Next, next page. Next, the next two two page. Yeah. It's very good question, from <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So 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 the next <laughs> I'm going to talk about the motivation <laughs> of that. Why why do we, why this one is uh, important? Uh, it's not just a mathematical question. It has some applications in real life. And uh, why why is, <laughs> why do we need to put this in the middle? Uh, the reason is look at this question. If uh, Ah, sorry, I, 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 I did not uh, forget that there are some details I did not fix, sorry. Uh, uh, so, so look at this question. If you have a, a random vector y has n, n co components and you don't know the distribution. Uh, for example, the price trend of m stocks, so they, they change every day and uh, you want to know the relation between these stocks. Uh, what do you do? You, one thing you can do is you calculate this covariance matrix between the, the component of y's and you want to know this, num this, this matrix. This, uh, this one is extremely important in st for statistics. Uh, then what do you do? The, the, the one way to do it, standard way to do it, you measure the y m times independently. You will get many n vectors and for this n vectors you for, to calculate this variance Covariance matrix, you just you, you, you calculate this one, right? For, for, for different alpha, uh, y alpha i minus the mean. This is the mean, and then multiply this y alpha j, and let, let n go to infinity. Then you will get this this number, right? Uh, so this is this is the very standard, and but of course you need to know a little bit about the y. Of course you cannot say just it's it's totally it's random of random. It's the, 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 the distribution is random. Then we, we don't know. So we, we have this model. We think it's very natural. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure how natural it is, whether other people agree with me, but we think it's natural. Just why is the linear mix of some fundamental independent random variables? Just why is random variables, but it's the linear combination of other random variables and these random variables are independent to each other. So this is our assumption. Of course it's not necessary in this way but I think it's uh, it's, it's relative general model. Uh, <laughs> I hope they believe this is true then I can sell this results to them. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay so if so then if then, then just plug this this uh, uh, assumption to here. You will find out uh, if you measure it n times, you, it means this uh, n times n x. Then the t x x is the vector of this, and y is the vector uh, y is the matrix of this. Then you will find out the covariance matrix actually is the limit of this one. Uh, this one. Oh, uh, this is this the uh, the first time the first. Oh yes, 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 yes. Oh no, no, both of them are n, because <laughs> you measure n times. Each times you get like the first time you get y one. Y one equals to t times x one. So x one is a vector. No coordinates are different. Coordinates are different. Yes. That's just this is the, the time, wh which time you, you, you measure it. Okay, so you have this one. And you can see this is very close to, to the one you have seen before, right? This, that's the reason you have this in, in the middle. The, the, if I go back a little bit, you will see the reason is you need to minus the mean here. That's why you get this one, okay? And for example, this example may be too simple uh, for this audience. Uh, so what is, if you think about the, the, uh, the change of the price of the stocks, and if that the stocks have no relation to each other, then just pure noise. They have some pure noise. So you, what you will see is just y equals to some pure noise x. X is a random vector uh, without this term, just a noise. But if some of them move together, they move together. It's still random, but they move together. It's kind of like they move together. It's like some random variable multiply a deterministic vector. That's why they have two parts. One is the, the, the noise, that's the signal. 
right? You want to know this signal. And this, if you write it in this way, they will find out this is the, the, the fundamental random variable, independent ra random variable is this, is this one, and the t is this one, right? Is this one. And let me. Uh, Which e? Oh, this e. Yeah. This e is just the uniform vector. Which do you remember the vector? Which is one, 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 one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so let me remind you. The model is the, the we have this assumption: fix the linear, a linear, uh, a lin mix the linear uh, random variables and the covariance matrix equals to limit of this, and this is uh, without loss of generality. Uh, we assume this, the mean of x is zero. The reason is, if it's not zero, it defines some x prime, just shift the mean. You put it back, it's still the same. Because we, if you look at covariance, of course, the mean is not important. And also, we can assume the, var the, variance, the, the variance of xi is one, because if it's not one, you can change the scale. If it, here it's not one, you can move the factor to t. Right? So, you can, so, so in this way, you can always assume the variance of xi is 1, and the, the mean is 0. So with this setting, you'll find out, the, if we do the calculation, you'll find out the covariance matrix is exactly t, t star. So it turns out the formula is this, the red, the red part at here, take the limits, goes to here. Yeah, go to here. So that's why we need to study this one. Uh, so think about the math, ma mathematical question is, if you know the t, what can you say about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, outliers, eigenvector of outliers of this one? This is a mathematical question. And on the other hand, the statistic question is, if you get something, what can you say from the information here to, to tell the, the, the others the information about the t? So if you don't know t, you get some, you get some eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. What can you say about t? Of course, if we do the proof, they're, they're, they're equivalent, but just the direction a little bit opposite. Yeah, opposite. OK, so uh, let's go on. Uh, let's rec recall this previous example. If they have noise and the variance, and let me make it simple, just say the variance is uh, 1 and the mean is 0, then you do the calculation, you find out this tt star equals to i plus vv. And this i comes from the noise, and the vv comes from the signal, uh, the signal we need to know. Just the, uh, w the, the, the rela that related to, this, to the signals, uh, to the signals. So now, the, uh, though we have this formula, we know the limit, take n to the infinity, the limit is this. But the issue is the n must be very, very large. Then you will see the convergency. Uh, so if you, you don't have many measurements, what can you do? So the, the, the big question is, if n is not very large, whether you can say something from this matrix to uh, say something from this matrix about this matrix. Uh, and so the basic idea is estimating the principal component, which is the large eigenvalues and their eigenvectors of the matrix T using, using the principal component of this one, of this one. Now sometimes if you are, you are lazy, uh, uh, you, can, you can just use this one. If you don't put this in the middle, you can use this one. But uh, in many cases, you can do this one. Yeah. So this. So you don't want n capital n to be too large. Yes. And you still want to be able to recover. Yes. Uh, so do you, do, you, do you know or care at, at what rate the limit converges? Uh, no, I don't, I don't care about that. I, I, what, uh, what I care is if n is not very large, or, or even it's large, uh, what's the difference between the, the eigenvalues? Just how much you can say and how accurate you can say about the principal component of this one from the information you get from here. That's, that's what I like to know. And uh, later you will see that it's, it's acceptable accurate. Yeah. OK, so, so le 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 this is our assumption. Uh, so again, uh, we, uh, th this TT star, this covariance matrix, has noise part and signal parts. And I assume this, uh, this is not, uh, it's not really assumption. Just to say the number of the no signals are all the one. Uh, of course, if you think that there are many, many signals, then you, maybe you are not called signal. You are still called noise. So, 
So in most uh, uh, papers, uh, it just, they just assume this is all the one, which means if you look at something like this, you will only see finite outliers. You will not see many eigenvalues jumped out. And the second one is this, this m, a t, I said it's not square, but it's the, uh, this, the m prime equals to m plus uh, all the one. And uh, look, if you look at previous example, if you look at this example, in this example, the m prime equals to m plus one. And I, I, I go through some statistic papers. In most cases, and it, they, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, for all the, all the papers I noticed, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, the, the third one is noise are comparable. Just there are no noise, very, very big noise. And the, most of the noise are, uh, are comparable. So, so, so that's why we call it noise. Uh, the noise. And N and M, this is a very weak assumption. Just the uh, log N and the uh, log M are comparable. So as you can see, N can be m much smaller than M. And, and uh, this is also important. This D, D, D is the eigenvalue, and the V is the eigenvector of this T, uh, is, uh, could depend on N and M. So you, maybe you will see, it, uh, for example, if you have two large D, you will see two outliers. And I allow this D depends on N. So maybe you will see two Ds are very close to each other and they go away. So what happened here is you will see two outliers uh, getting closer and closer and, uh, and move away, something like this. Uh, OK, this is a very rough picture. Sorry about the, the, the quality of the, the picture. Uh, so uh, th th this is actually very similar to the one I, I, I draw over there. Just you will see some, uh, see, see, see this density, and you will see some come out. Uh, in this case, I let all the noise to be one, and uh, for this picture, all noise to be one, and only one, sig one signal. That's why you will only see one s signal or outlier at here. Uh, outlier. And uh, the position of this outlier can be uh, calculated. Uh, you have, uh, have an explicit formula. Uh, for this case, it's very simple, uh, which is just this, which is, you, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I should use another letter. Uh, let's say if you look at this quantity, it's the lambda signal minus lambda noise, and the multiply n and m. Now, if you look at this quantity, as long as this quantity is larger than 1, which means the, just tell you the relation between the signal and the noise, as long as this one is larger than 1, you can see if noise is 1 and n and m are comparable, then as long as this lambda signal is larger than 2, then you will see this outlier. Uh, you will see an outlier, and this outlier, the location of this outlier uh, is this one, uh, this one. The distance between the, this dot to gamma plus is uh, d, pl d, d plus d, uh, 1 over d minus 2 plus some error. The error is extremely small uh, because it's complicated, so I did not write it here, but it's extremely small. And uh, we also believe <coughs> what we get is almost uh, optimum bound up to n to the epsilon, or maybe log n factor. Uh, so. But uh, if you have interest, you, you, can try, you, can, you can try to calculate the distribution of this outlier. Actually, we did some works uh, for the Wigner case. But uh, for this PCA, it's not important. People, uh, people only need to know, OK, it's, it's almost there. Then it's fine. So think about this. If you see this picture, you, you see one outlier, then use this formula you will go back to get your lambda signal. And it's very, very precise, uh, right? So this is the way to find out, use, use the eigenvalues of this Tx, Xt to get the eigenvalues of the T. The hope is very small. Actually, I will mention it, but basically, there's no hope. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, actually, uh, if you uh, just let uh, some, some spoil, you see the number four I will mention. If, you, if there's no outlier, you can say a little bit, but it's not, uh, it depends on the structure of your signals. If the signal is a little bit special, or not very special, but if, it's, if the V is supported in a uh, few, uh, few n uh, size, not the whole m, the whole, then you will have the chance to see it. Yeah. Do you use the eigenvector of the, of the determinant sequence? 
Right, right, yes, thank you, yes. Okay, so, oh, it's page 40, 40, okay. Uh, so uh, how about, the, uh, eigen, how about the, the, the eigenvector? Just what can you say about this eigenvector? Uh, v signal, so, so we want, uh, so if you, you do the calculation, you calculate, let me go, maybe need to go back a little bit. So you calculate the eigenvector and the eigenvalues of this one. What, can you say, say, say something about the eigenvectors of this one from the eigenvector of this one? So that's, that's what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, let u do, to be the eigenvector of mu, which is the outlier. So, so this is outlier, and it has an eigenvector we call it u. So what's the relation between this u and this v signal? Because we know the reason you have this mu because the d is large, right? When the signal is large, you will have this outlier, which is the mu. And clearly, this, new, uh, this u is related to this v. But what can you say about this, the relation between them? It turns out the angle between them, the angle between u and the w is, is almost fixed. If you, let's say, the, uh, OK, uh, this, this is a more general, more general result. Our result shows for any not just the direction of v. For any fixed normalized w, we have this formula, just a constant multiplied in the product of v plus errors. So l let me explain what's, what can you get from this result. So first, if you choose w equals to this v signal, if you choose this w as the v signal, then you will immediately get the angle between the v signal and w. And you will find out this angle uh, almost is, is very, is almost fixed. It's because the error compared with this constant, it, this, sorry, this f mu is a function of mu, which is a constant deterministic number. So you will find out the angle uh, almost fixed. And so if you look at this u, and this is your v signal. You find out this angle is almost fixed. And you will find out this part, which is not, is, which is orthogonal to this v, v signal, this part is, all, is isotropic, which means if you look at this, the inner product of this part, let me give it another name, let's say the uh, u. For this, in the product of this one, with any fixed w, which is also orthogonal to this v signal, this is very, very small. So which means this direction has no preferred direction. Or this vector has no preferred direction. So which means this u, the angle of the u and the v, are basically fixed, and other parts is basically random, basically random and isotropic. It can point to any any directions. You you have no idea it could be. So you are basically means you you are get nothing from this part. You get nothing from this part. Yeah. And uh, yes, and if you let's say if you have two. Uh, do I have time? Uh, maybe here. So if Let's look at this case. No. If you have two outliers, and both of th these two are very close to each other, then you will see the mix between the eigenve eigenvectors of these two, the two. You will see the mix of the eigenvector of these two eigenvalues. It turns out uh, if you have B, v signal, si signal 1 and the v signal 2. And you will have two eigenvalues, which is u1 and u2. Right? This is what you have. And you find the relation between them are very clear, which is the project of u1 on this v, v plane, the norm, sorry, the norm of the u1 on this v plane is fixed. And the u2 on this v plane is also fixed. And the projection of u1 and u2 on this plane, these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. Yeah. So it, of course, it's very hard to draw it uh, because it's two-dimensional blackboard. Uh, yeah. So if you think about it, it projects 
the u1 on the v plane, just which is expanded by the v, this is almost a constant. Uh, the, the constant it's, it's, it equals to some deterministic number. And this is also a norm, uh, a deterministic number. And you will find out this two are uh, orthogonal to each other in this v plane. Uh, in this v plane. Uh, so, then, so briefly speaking, you will see the relation between this. You will see the relation between the eigenvectors of t x x t and uh, with this t. Uh, this angle is almost deterministic. It's very stable, and other parts is basically random and isotropic. Uh, and turns out it's be very useful in this the following case if the v signal itself has n tilde components, non-zero components. Uh, m tilde is much less than m. Just say the m tilde stocks are related to each other. Not all of them related to each other. Just m tilde stocks are related to each other. So this v only has m tilde non-zero components. And for each component, then the size is this the size. This is the size, right? So with previous result, you will find out if the signal i is, is zero with the delocalization property, then you'll find out this eigenvector i is also small. If the v, v is the signal, right? If the signal i is small, then ui will also be small. And because this v, v signal is also proportional, kind of like proportional to this, uh, sorry, this u is kind of like proportional to this v because th there's angle, right? This angle is, the, is kind of fixed. Uh, then if v signal i is non-zero, then this ui will be at least this large. <coughs> but because m tilde is much less than m, so it ten, it's very clear, just look at the component of u, you will know which, if you look, the large component means in this, for this component, the V signal is large. For small components, which means the V signal of this component is zero. So just use these methods. You can easily find out which components of V signal are non-zero. So once you know which M tilde stocks are related to each other, then you can have some small matrix, and you can easily find out the relation between them. So use this. So based on this delocalization property, we can easily find out the which which component are non-zero? That's the, that's why this uh, actually this delocalization de uh, result is new. So that's that's why uh, we, we think it's important. Uh, okay. So brief. Uh, now let me, let me compare with some previous results. Some previous results. Uh, I think our results is uh, relative. Uh, this. Oh, uh, sorry, I forget to to change some notations. Very sorry. Uh, so. The P and the Q should be M and N. Sorry, so, so you see P and the Q, P and the Q. So they, they are M and N, sorry. Uh, and in, as you can see, for most previous results, noise is one and the D should be fixed. And people get the, the, uh, the, limits, the limits of, of mu. And for this case, uh, what? D is this D, uh, D beta. Uh, and for this special case, you see that this t is the is just t t looks like this. This a is a finite times finite matrix. Uh, this one they have the distribution of mu and uh, some uh, similar results. Uh, and and this is only a paper we find that the t is not square matrix. For all the others, people need to assume <coughs> t is uh, symmetric, uh, symmetrical matrix, or, or at least square matrix. Um, this is just for eigenvalues. For eigenvector, the usually the uh, the assumption is stronger, uh, which is as you can see, people need to assume the t is diagonal, or the x is Gaussian and diagonal, and uh, uh, this is either diagonal, either Gaussian, or t and x are independent, and uh, yeah, some similar uh, results. But uh, uh, Another thing is they, they find out they have the limit of angle between the u and the v. 
uh, but uh, in most cases, there are no error terms. I think we, I believe our error terms is the uh, is basically the optimum bounds up to some uh, n to the epsilon factor. Uh, but even more important, I think we get this we our result is more general because we have instead of this v signal here, we allow to you to put any fixed w here. Uh, Turns out you get this delocalization result. Yeah, delocalization result. Okay, uh, so so uh, meanwhile, let me briefly speak uh, what we get. We get uh, uh, the rigidity of the eigenvalues, uh, which means if a classical location and the, it, uh, the case, uh, the i eigenvalue is very close to the uh, classical location, uh, the error is the is uh, the error. You have seen the error in the. In the very beginning, it's the it's could not basically could not be uh, smaller up to n to the <coughs> epsilon. Delocalization of the eigenvectors of non-outliers. This is kind of answer your question. Just if for the eigenvectors of non-outliers, just for the eigenvectors of all all the eigenvalues at here, the delocalization holds. But for for things at here, you have seen the result. It's it's it then holds in the direction of the signal, but it ho the localization still holds for all the direction, which is orthogonal to the v signal. Right to the v signal, it's it's the project is fixed, but to all the other direction, it's still delocalized. And the uh, uh, direction of uh, I have seen this result. And okay, now let me answer <laughs> this question. So this is something new and uh, very surprise to us. We did not know this before. Uh, so what happened is basically. You need to find out this outlier. Then you know, okay, there's a D, large D signal there, and you try to find out the uh, V signal. But if you do not see outliers, what can you what can you do? We find out the one thing very interesting. Just when the D, if the outlier the, the is very very close to here, even just say there's nothing. But do you remember I I defined some uh, quantity uh, which when this quantity is larger than one, you will see the outlier. If it's less than one, you will not see the outlier. But when this, for this quantity, even it's small, a little bit smaller than one, then of course you will not see outlier. But you will see one thing very interesting is this, the eigenvectors of the, the eigenvectors here can give you some information about this V signal. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's small. But you definitely will see a little bit. But it's it's uh, maybe not very uh, applicable. But you see that it's it must be very close to one. Uh, if it's like half, then you can forget. It's, so it's, so I, I did not mention it in the, in earlier because I, it's an interesting result, but it's maybe not very important. Uh, again, uh, also also this one. Uh, uh, no, again. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, let's <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. My point is, this three is more important than this one. Uh, just compare with this three, this this four is not. Okay, uh, then also we have this result. Just uh, if you look at the k, largest k eigenvalue of the of the outliers, if you look at the largest k eigenvalues at here, they satisfy the Tracy Witten distribution, and uh, the based on this result because uh, the Nobody improved uh, for the Gaussian case. If H is Gau is G O E, then it 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 has uh, the Tracy Witten distribution. And what we proved is just for general distribution, it's, it's true. Yeah, true. And the isotropic law of this one, and uh, isotropic of law of this. Uh, let, let me talk about seven first. Uh, seven is just if two x, if two x, two different random ensemble, uh, two x. The the four the four moments the the first four moments match, then you will find out the local statistics should be the same for this model and for this model, uh, for this model and for this. And one thing very uh, one very important tool we, we we proved and developed is this called isotropic law of of these two types of matrix. Uh, by some because of some stupid mistake, I I I, I leave this. In this page, uh, I will, I will let me let me quickly say this first. So, what's this isotropic law? Isotropic law is, is say, you, uh, now let's talk about this case. H is a weakened matrix, and A is a deterministic matrix. Let's say 
you decompose this A that equals to unitar uh, unitary U times diagonal D and the uh, U star, then you, you solve, try to solve this equation. Th there's, there's nothing random here. This is a deterministic equation. Then you will find out for any fixed W and V vector, this, you will have this relation, just uh, your W multiply this, the resolvent of us. Uh, sorry, sorry, there's A here. Otherwise, it's, it's, this is very important. You must have H plus A here. Otherwise, it's, it's a result we proved this three years ago. It's the H plus A minus Z. It's the resolvent of H plus A. Uh, why do I put a minus A here? H plus A minus Z inverse is resolvent of H plus A equals to this. What in the middle is a, a deterministic matrix uh, equals to this plus error. And uh, we also believe this error is basically the optimum, has the optimum bound, but it's extremely complicated. Uh, and uh, this is the isotropic law because it's you, you, you understand this matrix from any directions. From any, uh, you, you understand this resolvent from any directions. Maybe the isotropic is not a good word because iso means it's the same, but uh, for many previous works, we use this name, and uh, so we just keep this name. Yeah. But basically, it means I understand this resolvent from any direction. Yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, yes, with the probability n, uh, one, with the probability one minus n to the minus uh, c for any large c. For extremely high probability, and for yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, five. Yeah. Yeah. So this change when the outlier gets very close. Oh yes, that's a good question. Uh, so when outlier is extremely, uh, there's a threshold. It's the n to the minus two uh, to just. When, when it doesn't work, basically, I can say when you cannot tell whether this is outlier or the non-outlier, then this five break. Yeah, yes, yes. So uh, it's extremely close. So and the dis distance between this outlier and this, this gamma plus is about n to the minus two thirds. Then of course, at that time, you cannot say this is outlier or not outlier. So it's so close. Then you will not have this five. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 two outliers. So that's why the, 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 the calculation is extremely complicated. I, 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 I only use this one singular, uh, sing, uh, single case. I only talk about one single case. But it, because it could be exactly the same, very, very close, a little bit uh, separated, or, or the three. These two are very close. This one is always close, but not that close. Yes. Uh. <laughs> so it's, it's very complicated. Okay, so what's the, what's the strategy? The strategy is this. The strategy is just for, for uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, sorry, maybe a little bit slow. Uh, so what we do is we, we, you have signal part and then you have no, and the signal and noise parts. Uh, then we define some, some uh, symmetric S. S is the, uh, S is symmetric and it has this, the, just we replace the signal parts always one. So basically, it had no signal. So this kind of like is a normal case, normal uh, T uh, without signals. And what we do is we we represent this the resolvent of this T x one minus E e x T. Rep represent this one with the resolvent of this one. Of this one. So this one has big signals. This one has no big signals. It's relatively normal. Yeah. But it's, it's really not trivial. It's, it's very complicated. There are many, many reasons. And the first reason is uh, it's not easy to find the, the, the relation between these two resolvents. For example, this is a this, this is simple example. You think about you have x, and you have the resolvent like this. And you have x prime, which is you plus a. a is, only, is a matrix with only one non-zero entries. So, so only change one entries, they have this x prime. So the re what's the resolvent between this, between this one and this one? 
Uh, I, I have no idea. If you have uh, idea, I really appreciate you can you can tell me. Just I, I have tried this at least two years. Just try to know the resolvent between these two models. But fortunately, we, we found a way. Uh, it's still very it's very complicated. But we found a way to to represent the resolvent of this one with this one. But you, you not just this. You need to know this and this. Also, you need to know this three matrix from any directions. That's very important. That's why I need this isotropic law. That it's, it's not just the entries, not just the GS, IJ. You need to know it from any directions. That's, that's make it so complicated. And OK, this, I, maybe I skipped something. And then I talk about you, what do you need to know is you need to know this isotropic law, which is the, uh, just, just know these three things from any directions. And for the Wigner case, we have something proved before. And we, for the S equals, if S is just uh, identical matrix, this is proved last year. And this year, we proved the general case, uh, proved uh, uh, based on, uh, 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 well, uh, just, 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 just the general case, just uh, for general A, we, will have, we have this one. Uh, similarly, you have a result for, for this one, uh, for this one. But it's more complicated. And uh, based on this one, as I mentioned, you can get rigidity, delocalization, uh, uh, tracy witten law. Uh, and, uh, and I consider this as a fundamental result for many future works. And uh, uh, maybe I stop at here. And uh, uh, there's, uh, I, I don't think I have enough time to finish all the uh, proof. But so, so let's 